What's up? This is the Magical Hubs Caps coming back, chilling, testing out my face tracking software. How you like that? Pimp hat. Pimp hat. Not there. Pimp hat there. Alright. I finally got my LAN pad from a company called MerryMobiles.com, and they sell this labeled as the LAN pad. But I figured out through lots of research and debate, this is not a LAN pad. That's not the model of this device. This is called a GOM FlyTouch. FlyTouch is the company in China that makes this device. It's a 350 MHz VIA 8509 processor and uh, it's pretty snappy. It came to me with Android 1.6 and uh, I recently flashed it with a rooted version of 1.6 1. 1. And then extension 1.99, so it's like a later version of that, you know. But uh, I already tested out a whole bunch of games and different things for it. It does tend to lag. It can't play 3D games. The accelerometer, I have still yet to figure out how to properly test or use with a game. But uh, the the touch. Everybody on the uh, the reviews for this FlyTouch device are all like, "Oh, this thing sucks! It sucks so bad because it's cheap and you know, like cheap and this and that and this and that." But it really doesn't matter because the only two differences between this device and the iPad is the fact that it has a plastic screen and a plastic back and a 350 megahertz via ARM processor. Now the iPad has a glass capacitive touch screen which is ridiculously nice and an aluminum shell case and the uh, famed IBM A4 1 gigahertz uh, DSP which is the processor. So as far as I'm concerned it, uh, the iPad just runs a glorified version of Linux. Yeah all you Apple fanboys, I just blew your world. Sorry about that. Um, and this runs Linux too, and Windows CE 6.0. So, for 80 bucks, it's well worth it. You know, I mean, it's not an iPad. I don't use it like an iPad. It's not meant to copy an iPad, even though it looks like one. This is a development platform for uh, applications and hardware and certain things like that. That is all that this is, is a development platform. It's not intended to be a iPad replacement because, oh my god, this thing was slow as hell when I got it. And upgrading it did a significant upgrade. It, it made it a lot faster. But, uh, uh, yeah, I just think that this is a great gift for people if they want to be mobile. I mean, I could fit this in my pocket. I was chilling with a friend yesterday at the uh, cafe, and we were eating a burger, and all everybody who walked by, including the chefs, like, double-taked. They're like, what the hell? Is that the new mini iPod or something? You know, everybody's tripping out. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't advertise this as an Apple product or anything like that, even though it looks like it, and people will see it as first glance and say, hey, is that the new development platform for the iPod or iPad mini or something yeah don't lie to them just say it's an Android tablet and that's it <laughs> but uh yeah for Mary Mobiles 80 bucks you get a nice tablet a uh, USB dongly thingy and uh, I would be very careful while flashing this because I've done it four times so far and some of the ROMs are in Chinese language and it's a bitch to read so uh, be careful um, there are some other things that I'd like to tell you about the device will not boot unless you have an SD micro card installed and there's two of them here <laughs> and uh, yeah I mean this is the shiznit as far as I'm concerned. It does Skype video conferencing. Uh, I can call people with this. Uh, the Wi-Fi card is decent. Um, the battery lasts like two hours, maybe three and a half if I put the brightness way the hell down. 
and it goes really down. I mean, like, you can be in pitch dark and barely see the screen. It's great if you want to be in bed reading an ebook or something and you don't want to blind your spouse or whatever. But, uh, yeah, the package includes a uh, two port USB proprietary IO connection that kind of resembles the iPhone or iPod or iPad data cable, but it's not. It totally does not, doesn't work with the iPhone data cable, even though it does look like it. It's got a charging port, a uh, headphone out, and the speakers are kind of good. They're all right, but it seems like they're wired in a certain way, like in series or something. It sounds like, like one of the speakers was wired up left to right, positive to negative, and the other speaker was wi wired up to like negative to positive. So it sounds like they're canceling each other out, you know, it's weird. But, um, yeah, I'd like to uh, pretty much say I'm here to answer any questions about how to flash this device and remove the original operating system on it and put in uh, a newer version of 1.6 or, which I'm still trying to figure out how to do, flash Windows CE 6.0 on there. I've heard that with the Eakin M003 it works and with this device it works but it's ridiculously simple there's no Wi-Fi there's no no like awesome features you know it's just like a basic OS and it's embedded so it boots really fast but um also another thing about this these devices have two gigabytes internal NAND flash and uh, as from experience so far the internal NAND flash has a read and write speed of about 10 megabits per second and the uh, micro SDHC card has a read and write speed of about 40 megabits per second. It's ridiculously fast. I don't know why but uh, it's really a good idea to run your operating system from the micro SDHC if you can. Every time I've flashed it, it installs it on the internal 2 gigabyte user partition but that's cool it doesn't bother me it's just I think if you can get this device to boot from USB or micro SDHC you might have a significant performance boost in uh, as far as uh, writing file acquisition stuff like that but um, I'm gonna turn on the device now enough yakking and show you guys what this thing's about I'll show you the boot screen happy little Android at the bottom it says V1.9883 and uh, this did have a animated Android uh, intro screen but that is now gone since I've upgraded the operating system which is fine it takes about 1 minute and 15 seconds to boot this device because of its 350 megahertz ARM based CPU happy little scrolling action there yeah it's pretty pimp <laughs> you guys can see my kitchen in the reflection <laughs> how funny but uh yeah once this thing boots up I'll show you everything that's tight about it and I'm not pulling this away because I want everybody to experience the full boot time and see I mean it's not that big a deal I just turn it on go grab a cup of coffee or something and then come back yeah see now it's turned on and uh, it's it behaves like a cell phone you have to unlock it to turn it on and stuff and you press this twice to get to the home screen and I already pimped it with hella apps it's got ass load of apps in it and uh, it's scrolls really smoothly the 3d UI is great uh, this is a updated version of it so I think you get four home screens there's also like a pseudo home screen type of deal when you uh, I think it's called MM plus home or something it's like a different style home screen which is really cool and uh, this, by the way, can run Nintendo and Super Nintendo and Game Boy Advanced games. The emulators do work on this device, which is tight. And uh, yeah, it's, it's when I got it, um, 
everybody on the forums and stuff were like complaining, this device sucks, it's slow, it doesn't play YouTube, it doesn't do this and that, nah, 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 nah. Well, I got mine, and everything that they were saying about it, like, was fixed. I mean, it works great, it plays YouTube. But, uh, I think the original model was 1.6, and right before we bought it, the tech over at, uh, Mary Mobiles installed a operating system firmware upgrade to be able to play Flash or YouTube basically. You cannot play Flash games on the internet like you can't go to the browser and try to go to like you know like newgrounds.com or something but uh, it is great for ebook reading uh, typing stuff and let me speaking of typing stuff let me show you what the on-screen keyboard looks like it's a standard Android keyboard Boop, pops up nice and quick and it's very responsive. This device, even though it has a plastic screen and a resistive layer touch screen, I have not encountered any mis mistypes or, you know, it's just great. And I highly recommend upgrading the operating system. And uh, this is the FlyTouch GOM. So search for FlyTouch firmware. And if you have this device, you can use the FlyTouch firmware, okay? If you don't have this device, it doesn't look like this, do not, under any circumstances, use a FlyTouch ROM. You will brick your freaking pad, and it's sad, dude. I already dealt with that once before. But I'll tell you how to uh, install an operating system on these, like uh, a newer version of Android or whatever. What you do is you take out your micro SDHC, mine's 8 gig, and then you put it in your computer via like a SD adapter or whatever and in the root directory of the SD you put a uh, you get your firmware offline the fly touch firmware that you want or want to test or whatever and there's hell of flavors of different like compiles of the shit so be careful um, if you get a Chinese one uh, talk to me and I will walk you through flashing and re putting the stuff on it and everything because I flashed this device without using a computer. I used the dongle and a firmware on here so it was kind of a bitch but it is possible to be done that way. But um, yeah, what you do is you take this micro SDHC out, you put it in your adapter, put it in your computer, get your firmware and then you, it's usually a zip file or a RAR file. You unzip it and then inside there, there should be a folder called script. It's a script folder. What you do is you take just that folder, drag it on over to your STHC, you know, and then put this, make sure your pad's off before you do this. You put your memory card back in, and then you power it on. Hold it down, and it'll turn on. And after about maybe two seconds, it'll say, update procedure happening. You know, it's like going to tell you, I think this one right here, I was in the middle of flashing. Let's see if it'll do it for you guys. This is the original 1.6 OS, as you can tell. And uh, there it goes. Android update will start after two seconds. Uh, a lot of scary text comes up, like things that you might not understand. And that's cool. As long as you keep seeing these green bars saying successful, everything's copacetic you know what I'm saying <laughs> but yeah have fun flashing your gome fly touch uh, hubs caps you know freaking come to me if you have any questions or cool apps or whatever and uh, also these devices get pretty hot and I think right up here somewhere right around here or here there is the Wi-Fi chipset and it gets really hot like the top corner of this thing gets hot and right here is it kind of gets warm that's where the arm based via processor is and I gotta tell you something the battery performance sucks on these so if you want to get better battery performance open up your computer and create a new dot text file and uh, look up on the internet CPU freak F R E Q and it's a number string all the way from 66 to I think 4 487 or something 500 megahertz and it uh, throttles your CPU which is fantastic because usually it just runs at full tilt 
and doesn't slow the hell down when it's not doing anything, which is ridiculous. So it's a great idea to put the script in there, uh, in the main route after you're done flashing or whatever, and then it will automatically, when your uh, pad's not doing anything,